Well, all the practices are complete, and all we have left is one preseason game for your New Orleans Saints. It's New Orleans Saints Training Camp Report, preseason game number three edition. I'm Todd Graffinini. This is Aaron Summers. Aaron, no more practices. All we've got left now for coaches to evaluate is one final game in the Caesar Superdome, 7 p.m. on Friday against the L.A. Chargers. First things first, though, first home game for all the Saints fans. I know they cannot wait to get back in the Dome. It was fun being back in the Superdome for that open practice on Sunday. I don't know if this, the players enjoyed it. There were a ton of fans out there. So we're going to look forward to that energy, the excitement of being back in the Dome. And I know we're playing the Chargers. It's not so much about playing the opposition at this point. It is about how you adjust throughout the game to what they're giving you, but just how you play. It's going to be about execution, the tempo that you play with, and the decision making from some of these players. They're out there to show what they can add to this team, prove their worth. Here's head coach Dennis Allen on who we may or may not see starting on Friday night. We'll, we'll see how we play it out you know, on Friday night. We've got a lot of good work in training camp, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty um, pleased with where we're at to this point. Everybody's got different philosophies on, uh, on preseason. Um, but look, I think getting in a, in a game environment is, is good for, for everybody, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what we'll do. Well, if you've watched this show throughout the last month, Aaron, we have talked constantly on different positions that we've been watching closely. You can go to linebacker, you can go to offensive line, you can go to the defensive backfield, you can go to wide receiver. There's a plethora of positions that we have kept an eye on. Who are you going to watch on Friday night? A lot of those areas we've been watching because of injuries and depth at those positions. A linebacker with Pete Werner being on and off the field with the groin injury. Offensive line has been a little depleted at times. But this is about those fringe players, the players that are going to make the 53-man roster, the players that can add value on special teams. Some of those players are going to be guys like Marquez Callaway, who significantly played a lot on the wide receiver room last year. You have linebackers across the board that can add on the special teams. I don't know any other people that you're looking at. Nephi Sewell, he's been working with the ones next to Demario Davis all week. And let's hear from Nephi with his opportunity coming up on Friday. I feel good, you know, um, continue. I just got to continue to, you know, play hard and uh, continue to prove that I belong in this league. Uh, as an undrafted free agent, I feel like, you know, I have a lot to prove and I'm going to continue to do that. I love the underdog mentality. I don't expect people to, you know, read my name up uh, when they think of, like, high draft picks or anything. So, you know, I like to stay under the radar, but when it comes to getting on the field, I'm going to make sure people know I'm out there. Well, Aaron, the harsh reality of the NFL is some of these players that are playing on Friday night won't be here next week because of cut downs getting to the NFL required 53. But here's some of the veterans giving advice to some of these young guys who may or may not make the team. I would say just put your best stuff on tape in the preseason games. Um, you never know who's watching. Well, you do know who's watching. All 31 of the teams are watching you. Um, so don't get down on yourself and play every rep like somebody else is watching. Just do all you can, you know, try your best. Um, sometimes our best isn't good enough, um, uh, but you know, like I would try to remind them, you know, you know, I've been on four teams, you know, there's 31 other teams out there and you know, all of them are looking. And so, um, you know, you can't just get caught up in trying to, you know, make this roster. Um, you know, there's other rosters out there that, you know, I think a lot of these players could, could be an impact on. We have talked extensively about the defense throughout training camp. Co-defensive coordinators Ryan Nielsen, Chris Richard, calling plays, what have you, they've been outstanding. Offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael has kind of flown under the radar, but he has gotten rave reviews throughout training camp and the couple of preseason games here to this point. And let's not overlook what Carmichael has done. He's been here for a very long time. And while former head coach Sean Payton was the offensive guru, the one that kind of would write plays out in the dirt on the fly, Carmichael is the one that really sticks to the book. He writes out the plays and he has been able to get the offense on the same page because they know what to expect. They know the concepts and they understand the ins and outs of what they're trying to do. Here is head coach Dennis Allen on what Carmichael has brought to the team this year. Number one, he's, he's highly intelligent. 
and I think he's a good teacher and communicates well with the, with the players. I like his calm demeanor, you know, because he doesn't get rattled by by a lot of things, and so that's uh, it's a good quality to have. Well, as we said in Green Bay last week, Aaron, no more talking. Preseason game number three coming up on Friday, 7 p.m., back in the Caesars Superdome. It's your New Orleans Saints against the L.A. Chargers.